Welcome, my gorgeous Libras. Um, this is going to be your September 2024 reading. This is for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising. Uh, you could certainly have placements within Libra. Um, some of you are intuitively guided. More and more of you, thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Um, many of you know I read through my spirit guides. I really use the cards as tools. Um, some believe me, some don't, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, you may also be in love with the Libra. And if that's the case, just understand your guides know that you're here. So you'll probably receive messages too. Um, I'm trying to keep my intros a little shorter. Um, but I do want to let you know that this month I'm doing something a little different. Normally what I do is I start with the birthday month, which I did, uh, so Virgo, um, and then I, I go in order from there. But what I'm doing this month is I'm doing opposite signs. So now that we're doing your sign, um, Aries is your opposite. So we will do Aries after this. And I definitely feel like, you know, your opposite sign is... A great area to look at because, you know, I feel like our opposite signs really show us like, you know, what is it we may be lacking that they have that we can use and vice versa, by the way. Um, so, yeah. And what are we going to do this month also is I'm bringing back the major arcanas. Um, I, I really love doing them in a reading. I don't know why I don't do it more often, but we're using this as like bullet points for your reading. So, you know, we're going to take really whatever comes out, but hopefully three to four cards. And again, just a bullet point, but sometimes they can be their own little message. So we'll bring them in. Um, we are, of course, going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. Uh, I feel like. Her words of wisdom always fit within our readings, always. Um, for your clarifiers or to go deeper, like I like to say, we are going to use the Tredivia Tarot. And by the way, I'm going to use the same decks for opposite signs. So I am going to be looking for like synchronicities in that. I haven't done their, their sign yet, airy sign yet, but they'll be right after you. So. Um, to Divya Tarot, to go deeper. And um, one of my beautiful, beautiful subscribers had, um, I'm trying to think, um, Sacred, I'm sorry, I can't remember the whole name. Um, but anyway, she was saying that she was getting ready to purchase the good Tarot. And it's interesting, it's stuck in my mind. So um, we are going to use the good Tarot for you for the month of September. This will be your main spread, but let's go ahead and begin. So we're gonna start with Mother Mary. I'm gonna bring the lid down a little bit more. There we go. Let's go ahead and give him a couple shuffles. Everything is always pre-shuffled, but I do like to shuffle them with you here also. All right. I feel like I'm talking really fast. I don't know why. All right, Libra, if you're ready, I'm ready. I'm actually going to bring the lid up just a little bit. There we go. All right, Mother Mary, your beautiful words for Libra. I do want to give a shout out to my nephew, Sean, who is on September 24th right on that cusp of Virgo and Libra. My gorgeous granddaughter, Lily, um, who I don't know if how many people saw, but I put her, she's a beautiful singer and um, she has a channel where she just, she just did a Billie Eilish song. I can't think of the name of it, but oh my gosh, it was just so gorgeous. So I did share it with you guys, you know, hoping I just feel like she's going to go viral. I just feel like that. And um, any support from you guys, greatly appreciated. Um, but she's October 14th. And then my beautiful sister, Tracy, who um, has passed has passed on. 
but definitely feel she's one of our major guides. And that is Sean's mom, October 15th. So shout out to them and Mother Mary. Mother Mary for my lovely Libras. She's like, I really want shuffled good, Sandy. Hmm. You got a few, but we are going to take them. All right. We have health. Health. My prayers for healing miracles have been heard and answered. Health. Interesting. Um, I feel like that's a very good thing. So some of you may have been praying about, you know, solutions to some health problems and those answers may be coming to you. So, you know, a quiet mind is usually where you find guidance, but not always. Mm, sobriety. Well, that could relate to health for sure. My clear mind, it's funny, I just said that. My clear mind is easily able to focus and concentrate sobriety with health and then hello hope beautiful hope i trust that god has wonderful solutions and brilliant plans in store for me hope well i don't feel like it would come out unless god already has these plans brilliant plans in store for you so health sobriety and hope. Hope is like the star card. You know, keeping your hope alive. Um, no matter what, keep that hope alive. All right, so let's bring in the major arcanas. So I'm going to make sure they're face up. I'm going to give them a couple shuffles. And again, we're just using them as bullet points. Um... I really love them in a reading. They always tie back. Just like Mother Mary always ties back to the reading. Okay. Well, your major arcana just jumped out with judgment, your spiritual team. But I'm not quite ready to take them yet. But we will take notice of them. You know, judgment speaks about um, being in the present moment. These, This is where your signs are sent. And again, I feel like you are receiving guidance. So just bring in, bring in yourself to that present moment. It also speaks about a rebirth. But I feel like it's always a good thing when judgment comes out. You know, it also represents that your spiritual team is here. Um, and feel free to ask for confirmation. You know, through your guides, like, let me know if this reading is for me. You know, the whole reading might be for you, or it could just be certain messages. But you'll know. Trust, trust your intuition. Um, trust your feelings. You know, some of you will get goosebumps. But you can ask your guys to have me say certain things. And I say random things all the time. And I used to doubt myself. It's funny, did I not just cut these... All right, I think I just need to take a second and just clear my energy. I've been on the phone fighting with my um, cable company and just want to get rid of that energy. Shake it off. That's a Taylor Swift song. Shake it off. All right. I think we have seven planets in retrograde right now. Um, hmm. It's interesting when that happens. You know, I don't know a lot about astronomy, but we have the hangman. All right. So I have a feeling you've been patiently waiting for something. Um, it's interesting. The hangman, he's like swaying to the right 
almost like waiting for something to come in. So we'll see what comes next to him. But the hangman is really seeking wisdom, um, spiritual wisdom, but for this earthly plane. Some of you may have felt like, like you're in stagnant type energy. But I have a feeling that's going to change. Um, and sobriety may be another reason, you know, that came out because maybe you are about to receive that guidance. We have the death card, your neighbor. Interesting because it's very close to judgment. Death card is about closing of a door. Um, but it is so a new door can open. And it always does. You know, death is about rebirth, transformation. Interesting how they're looking right at each other. And then we have the chariot. Um, chariot, unlimited potential. Card of Cancer. But I'm not really reading the, these as signs. I'm reading them as the energy. So the chariot, again, is about unlimited potential. Beautiful rainbow behind this person. You know, the thing that you want to remember with the chariot is um, it's not the reins of the horses that tell the chariot where to go. It's your intentions. And it's the power of your intentions. You know, I feel like some of you have been seeking again this wisdom. And I feel like maybe one of the things that your guides are saying back to you is like, it may be time to close a door. It may be time for you to allow a rebirth to take place. And I feel like there's no fear um, when the chariot shows up. You know, again, the only limit on the chariot is what our human mind puts upon it. But other than that, it's really unlimited potential. So I have a feeling things are changing for you um, in a good way. All right, let's bring in the Tarot of Dreams. So it's like the hangman seeking wisdom, right? Like I want some type of change. I want, I want some type of answer, you know, maybe some type of clarification, whether what I'm thinking or what's being presented to me is a good, you know, should I do it? Should I not? Well, the death card would, would say, um, you know, and again, I feel like you may have been in like some stagnant type energy and I feel like maybe you just need to give yourself the opportunity to change that. So we'll see, you know, more about what what door needs to close so that this rebirth can take place. But I feel like this is also um, helping to ease your mind a little bit. Like, you know, maybe I'm leery about closing that door. Will I be OK? Will things be OK if I do? And I feel like the answer is yes. I'm like, really, it'll only get better and better and better and better. But again, your intentions are a big part of that. All right, let's give the good row cut, introduce them into the reading. They're a big deck. All right. Well, hello, beautiful sun. Actually, I'm going to slide everything up so we have room. Sun. First of all, it is the card of Leo. Um, it's the ruler of Leo. But the sun, you know, I mean, the sun to me, especially with the hangman here, this is clarity. This is illumination. Um, so if I had any doubt, like, you know, am I heading to the, you know, like what I want to do? Is it the right thing? This gives you complete illumination. Um, you know, the sun to me is like a brand new day. It could be a brand new chapter for some of you. But I feel like the sun, first of all, the sun kind of helps eliminate any fear because shadows can't hide when the sun is out. You know, whatever was done in the dark comes to the light in the sun. And maybe that is 
a little bit of what I needed to see or face. You know, something was done in the dark. Now I see it. You know, and once you see it, sometimes you can't unsee it. But then that can, you know, how do I want to say, like not make you, but give you the reason to say, you know, okay, okay. Now I know a door needs to be closed. But again, this is about a brand new day. Death card is about transformation, a rebirth, and then unlimited potential with that. So I like that a lot. We have the Page of Pentacles. And then we have the Three of Pentacles. Wow. Okay. So let me tell you, for the first thing that came to my mind is for some of you, I feel like a change that you may want to, that you may be considering is something I feel like you're just going to be a natural at anyways. Maybe that's why I talked about like, uh, my granddaughter, you know, singing, and that's what she wants to do for her career. Um, because I kind of feel like there's something, you know, there's this wisdom you already have. Some of you can talk about something that you've gone to school for, but maybe it's been on the back burner for whatever the reason. Um, Page of Pentacles to me is like a path of knowledge. You know, I'm gaining knowledge as I go along. Um, and you can relate it to an earlier time. And then it moves into the Three of Pentacles. Well, the Three of Pentacles is all about your individuality. You know, um, it's about your creativity and really allowing it to shine. I feel like if you question, like, can I be successful at something? You know, is this the right path for me? First of all, the sun, the sun is illuminating your individuality. And I often feel like if this is something, let's say, a million other people do, they still won't do it quite like you. You know, there's something special about you and the way you do it. It's like celebrating, you know, the individuality within yourself. And again, I feel like some of you, you already possess like the knowledge and maybe it's just stepping into it. Three of Pentacles is also about other people recognizing you, you know, recognizing um, really how good you are at something. It's not just recognition, it's also rewards. So, you know, it feels like as I start to move into that energy, really this is like your creative house, but also probably how you make your money or if it's something new, how you will be making your money. It just means to me that other people will be paying attention. Um, but I do feel like the person in the Three of Pentacles is like, I'm just concentrating on my craft. Uh, and maybe I don't even I don't even notice that other people are paying attention. But they are. Again, the sun, it's like the spotlight is on you. The spotlight is on you this month. That's a good thing. Okay, let's keep going. Um, we are in the middle of Mercury retrograde. And I can definitely feel that energy. Now, I am ruled by Mercury, both my sun and my moon. Um, but I can definitely feel that, you know, just the way people are speaking. Uh, and, that, and we do want to think about that. You know what I mean? Like, before I say something, I may want to just think about it for a second. You know, is it going to benefit me? Am I saying it to help someone? Or am I saying it to, like, cut them down? Hmm. Eight of Swords. Okay. Well, that's a self-created prison. This means that there have been some walls that have been built up. You know, I often feel like we built these walls to protect ourselves. 
But it also means that we're not trusting in our own energy. You know what I mean? Because um, we don't need these walls. You know, and I'm not trying to talk you out of like, like I feel in the Eight of Swords, the only person who can uncreate it is the one who's created it. So it's not like I can even try to talk you out of it. I mean, maybe. I hope I can. But I feel like the sun illuminating that. I feel like this is the door. This is the door. And it could simply mean like, you know, like maybe I'm not trusting in myself. But I feel like if you're not trusting in yourself, chances are it came from other people who like uh, probably like lower vibrational energy that may have told you you're not good enough. Um, you know, you're not lovable. And that's all lies, right? Because it's coming from lower vibrational energy. Eight is about a new beginning. But in the Eight of Swords, you have to allow that. And you know what else I feel like in the Eight of Swords? When I do put down these walls, you know, when I do trust in myself again, trust in my intuition, then I feel it's freedom. Like, it feels like freedom. And I feel like that's what the sun wants you to know. It just, to me, it doesn't feel major, but I feel like there's something, and it's interesting, I'm seeing all these white feathers, huh? I'm seeing all these white feathers coming down from heaven. And you know what that reminds me of? When my sister passed, um, I was staying with her. We were living together. And um, I had just moved back to, like, my hometown. Um, and when she passed, the day of her funeral, I looked at my pillow and on my pillow, and my pillow was a memory foam pillow, and um, I had nothing in my room that had, like, feathers in it. And there was a pow, and I am talking a pow, of little white feathers sitting right in the middle of my pillow. It actually made, like, a little, even though there's no weight to the, to the feathers, it, like, made an indent into my pillow. It's almost like... Like, she really wanted me to recognize that. I knew immediately that was a sign for my sister. And I have to tell you, like, something is, like, something pulled my eye to these white feathers. So, you know, whether whether it is my sister, her name is Tracy, by the way, um, just helping all of us, or this is, you know, recognition of your guides helping you. Trusting, trusting within yourself, trusting within your spiritual team, trusting within your own creativity, you know, and again, the hangman, stagnant energy. But again, it's not really wasted time because I, I am looking for wisdom, but I'm looking for spiritual wisdom. And I feel like that's what's happening here. Like, I know I'm meant to see these white flowers for, or these white feathers for you. So, breaking yourself free. Take a chance on yourself. Um, bring your creativity to life, even if you're just stepping into it. Okay, interesting. So, but let's keep going. Eight is also the number of infinity. As above, so below. No beginning, no end. That means we will always be connected. You know, those feathers seem like, they look like signs. Like your guides are sending you signs. And again, sobriety, right? My clear mind is e easily able to focus and concentrate but also receiving signs. I feel like the more clear our mind is, it's not that you can't receive signs in the Eight of Swords energy, because I feel like your guides will try to, you know, try to help you in any way they can. And if you miss one sign, they're going to send it again. But again, those white flower or those white feathers, I don't know why I keep saying flowers. Maybe someone that's your word of confirmation. 
Um, but I know that I was meant to time back to my sister. So I like that a lot. All right, let's keep going. Mm. Well, hello, Ace of Cups. Now it's right under the sun. Ace of Cups is unconditional love. Unconditional love. Illumination over this Eight of Cups. Or Ace of Cups, I'm sorry. You know, the sun, it's like, you know, maybe some of you fear. And this love can, you know, it can be a love of life, a love of another person, a love for what you do. And it can be all the above. But the sun is helping to illuminate this for you. And I feel like so is one someone from your spiritual team. All right. I'll take it. Hmm. Seven of swords. And then we have the nine of swords. Okay. Well, things just got a little bit more serious. So. Hmm. It makes me feel that the self-created prison, it does feel like it's due to other people. You know, other other people who are who carry untrustworthy energy. That's really what the Seven of Swords is about. They call it the thief in the the thief in the night. Um, it's someone who takes more, you know, someone who's a taker. And then that moves into the nine of swords. So it does, it is showing us that if we don't uncreate this prison, that it will move to the Nine of Swords. And that Nine of Swords is a lot of worry. It can be, it can turn into anxiety, high blood pressure. Like, no wonder health is out also. Because that's exactly what I feel the Nine of Swords energy does. It affects our health in some way. But the meaning of the card is unnecessary worry. Unnecessary. But coming right next to that Seven of Swords and the Ace of Cups, I feel like what it's saying, you know, and this page um, now is kind of feeling like it could also be someone from a younger time in your life who was untrustworthy, who may, and you know, and it, and it can even go the whole way back to your childhood. And it can be multiple people. Where, you know, I feel like in the Seven of Swords, like, tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies, tell me lies. <laughs> Sorry. Every time I sing, I know I sing terribly. Um, I always comment to people saying, like, ah, I hate it when you guys sing. We can't help it. You know what I mean? Like, it just comes to us. Um, but anyways, so... I feel like, I clearly feel like this is talking about, you know, I feel like it's like you're not trusting yourself. You're allowing people of the past to really determine um, what it is that you can do with your life. You know, the top line is showing us like, you know, all that you can be, right? And to be proud of who you are. Again, that Three of Pentacles, it's celebrating you, your individuality. There is no one else like you. There can be a million people who do what you do, but again, no one's going to do it like you. It really is about rewards and recognition. But down here, I feel like someone wasn't giving me that. Someone was probably telling me the opposite. And listen, that may be one of your life lessons. You know, remember that we're, we're souls having, we're really spiritual beings. Our spiritual being is our soul's intellect. Um, and our souls having these human experiences. And really, we're meant to grow from them. Not to get like stuck in these prisons. But sometimes this can be part of the lesson. 
like, can I break myself free from, you know, my own limited thoughts, other people's limited thoughts, and really start believing in myself again? You know, I feel like the minute you do that, the right people will just surround you. I feel like love, probably some of you, it may not have gone the way you had hoped it had gone. Maybe you would hoped that someone would evolve. But, you know, it's very seldom that I feel like who's ever in that Seven of Swords, that they evolve. Because I feel the opposite. I feel like they're more than comfortable living in lower vibrational energy. And, you know, I only have to look back at my own life to understand many times I've lowered my own vibration to be with someone. But, you know, you can only do that for so long. Because it doesn't feel natural to you. So, moving into that Nine of Swords, don't forget the meaning. Unnecessary worry. It is worry. But it's, you know, divine temperance would say, hand over the things that you cannot control. The things that you worry about that really your worry cannot change anyway. Hand it over to me. Let me deal with that. Some of you at your guides, like, hand me your worry. Trust within yourself again. You know, again, that chariot, unlimited potential. It's meant for you. You know, and although the Seven of Swords is next to the Ace of Cups, you also have the sun above it. So again, you know, you this is another way that you can help yourself move forward. The sun tells you that anything that is done in the dark, it will come to the light. Now, I feel like things have already been done in the dark, and chances are they've already come to the light, and I feel like that's a little bit of what the hangman is, right? So I need to just be honest with myself. You know, am I willing to be in that energy? Some of you, I feel like this is old energy, but it's affecting you today. That means it's affecting your possibilities of all you could be. You know, it's affecting your trust within yourself. Um, you know, within your creative house, let's say. But I'm telling you, it's like, I feel like as soon as you move into that energy... I feel like the right people will surround you like soulmate energy. And remember, soulmates, they're not just lovers, you know. They're just the right people at the right time. Okay. Let's keep going. The Emperor. Well, there's your opposite. Interesting. Um, it's interesting I even decided to do the uh to do it this way this month, but my intuition told me to do it. And you know, ninety-nine point nine percent of the time I trust my intuition above all. Um, and you know, intuition to me is is that is our spiritual team, you know, trying to feed us the signs, trying to help us along the way. So let's talk about the emperor for a second. First of all, card of Aries. Um, but this, the, um, the emperor can certainly be a business owner. Some of you, I feel like that's a path you, like you, you want to see yourself on. But again, maybe there's some fear wrapped around that. Some of you, you could have already stepped on a path, but maybe you haven't yet seen the fruits of your labor. I feel like that'll change. But also, I want to say with the emperor mirroring the ace of cups, and he came in the upright. So in the upright, the emperor is someone that we can look up to. This could be someone who's even a little older than you. You know, for some of you, I do feel like it's you. And it's you becoming like, you know, at the top of your game. 
you know, seeing the fruits of the labor. I feel like the emperor is someone who is methodical, puts plans in place. Um, you know, if I'm uncertain about something, I'm going to put a plan in place. Doesn't mean I have to follow it A, B, C, D. Maybe it's just the beginning. But it's a, it's, it's a great omen of business ownership also. Now, again, relating to the Ace of Cups, if this is talking about love, this is someone that you can look up to. This is someone who does care for their fellow man and woman. You know, this is someone who has lived life, has been through it. And I feel like what better teacher than someone who has been through, you know, some of the situations you may find yourself in. Um, can be someone that's a little older. Doesn't have to be though. Can also be the father figure. But mirroring this Ace of Cups, I feel like, I just feel like there's nothing to fear here. But fear itself. Hmm. All right, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Look at that. The hangman and the hangman. Potentially two people could be in this stagnant energy. You know, it's interesting. Um, and he's swaying even more. He's got the sun behind him. Here's the sun. Here's the moon. Interesting. It's like this hangman is receiving clarity. It can certainly talk about two different people who are both in this energy. Let's see what's underneath it. The Hierophant. Card of Tars. Um, by the way, you're getting a lot of um, Major Arcanas. To me, that signifies potential real changes in your life. So the Hierophant is about your belief system. Are you living your life the way that you really would like to live it? You know, interesting, Mother Mary brought out hope. Keeping hope alive. The Hierophant, it is a number five, so it does speak about change. But I feel like the Hierophant just wants you to question yourself, your life, like, am I living, like, am I living life the way I believed I should, you know, am I, what's the word I want to say, um, you know, I want to say, am I living life according to my terms, but I feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, first, like, I may have to have realized that you know, someone may just not have the same morals that I have. And again, maybe I've lowered my own standards to meet another. But I, I just don't feel like that's what you want anymore. So I feel like the change, and we have the five of pentacles underneath that. Two fives. First of all, mirroring energy. And we do have your opposite sign. And that's exactly why I'm doing the doing the readings this way. I'm looking for mirroring energy. So two hangmans. Hierophant, your faith, hope. And then the five of pentacles. Five of pentacles can talk about something that happened that was really outside of your control. Again, I feel like that's probably why I was talking about temperance saying, well, then hand it over to me. You know, two people could potentially making be making changes that, I don't know, you know, do they know that each one's making this change or wants to make this change? Do they know that each one really wants to have this transformation in their life? Or are they living like, you know, each living their individual life? And then potentially coming together. We'll see. I mean, we have love here. And again, it's not just love, like romantic love. I also feel like it's 
It's love of what you do, love of what it is you're creating, and um, trusting within your abilities. Doesn't mean like it's going to be easy, but really, I feel like any work that you put towards your creative house, I do feel like other people are going to take notice. And I do feel like it's just, it just feels like something you were, you were made to do. Um, but you have to realize that. Okay. Let's bring in the Tredivia Tarot. Um, by the way, I've had a few people ask me where I got this deck at, and it's a company that actually gifted them to me. Um, and I'll leave it. I'll leave it in the more detail section. But their website is um, amora.com. But again, I'll leave that for you. All right. So let's just go ahead and. Start clarifying or go deeper. We're going to start at the beginning, but we are reading it as a whole. Well, no wonder I was talking about temperance. Here she is. You know, I feel like te temperance brings a few different messages. The first message is patience. And, you know, maybe she is asking you to be patient, but sometimes I feel like Divine is awaiting on us. They're being patient with us. Um, I love that she's coming over the hangman and the sun. You know, because it is about divine timing. Some of you, that's what your question is. Is this the right time? Well, with the sun out, I feel like the answer is yes. Because the sun is really like a rebirth also. The death card is a rebirth, transformation within oneself. And that transformation brings unlimited potential. I also feel like temperance is the one, like you could, you can't really see it in this image, but a little bit. Um, she's really making sure that both the cups of the soulmates are being equally filled. This could be why we're seeing synchronicities, right? Two hangmans. Because maybe two people want to know if the timing is right. Maybe you have no clue that this Ace of Cups is going to enter your life. And this is just about trusting within divine timing. Also card of Sagittarius, by the way. Another major arcana. Hmm. Another major arcana, the moon, Pisces, ruler of cancer. The meaning of the moon and talk about uncertainties, right? I can only see as far as the moonlight allows me to see. But it's also very dreamy energy. Some of you may have this dream that you really do want to bring to the world. And again, it can be both in love and a love of what you do. It's interesting. We have the moon, we have the sun, and hope really is the star. So the moon, the sun, the stars. The moon is coming over that page of pentacles. And I feel like for some of you, it's simply you questioning, you know, can can I really live life the way that I that I that I imagine, you know, how I see it in my, you know, in my mind's eye? Can I really bring it to fruition? The moon, I also feel like says you don't have to rush, right? Like, you know, just stepping forward, just stepping into something. Is, you know, because I feel like as I step into it, everything starts to evolve. So, I do also want to say the moon is mirroring the seven of swords. So, for some of you, you may not have had a great experience with 
let's say a Pisces or a Cancer. So that doesn't have to be a Pisces or a Cancer. It really, to me, is speaking just about uncertainties. You know, can I really be successful? Probably both in love and in, you know, my creative house, in my money. Can I make a living? Well, I don't feel like temperance would be here if you couldn't. I don't think the three of pentacles would come out if you couldn't. I think really what's holding you back, if anything, it's your own self-doubt. And it that is something we have to work on, especially if we've been dealing with, you know, people who have been difficult, people who have been working against us, um, you know, trying to fill our head full of lies. But we have to learn through our own thought system. You know, sometimes we lie to ourselves. Okay, well, let's keep going. Um, and then I'm also feeling for some of you, this could be some type of change that's happening around uh, the moon cycles, like potentially the next full moon, let's say. We have the Ten of Swords. Okay. So some of you have been in a repeat pattern. And maybe as much as you wanted something to change, it just doesn't. Again, I have to tie it back to the Seven of Swords. It's interesting because you are the third reading I've done, and I feel like everyone has gotten the Seven of Swords. You know, and I feel like most of us have dealt with those those lower vibrational people who, you know, don't want to see us do well, maybe because they're not doing well. We just have to learn to rise above it. What am I holding? Ten of Swords. So I definitely feel like there may have been a repeat pattern. And listen, the sun would illuminate that to you. So I feel like very quickly you would know that. Like as soon as I said that, you're probably like, hmm, yep, that's true. Ten of Swords is about taking dagger after dagger after dagger in your back. And, you know, sooner or later, I've got to realize that. Sooner or later, I've got to realize, like, here I am creating these walls that really are blocking my opportunities. And it's based on, again, lower vibrational energy. Some of you may have dealt with, you know, quite a few people. You know, um, it's funny because, again, I'm going to use someone's comment um, that I did use in another reading where... She kept saying, like, every time I close the door and open up a new door, I kept bringing in this type of energy. And my feeling on that is that I've got to look at myself. I got to think about, okay, where's my vibration? Do I keep lowering my vibration to meet another's? That's what the Seven of Swords would want you to do. Like, come live in my lower vibration. Why? Because they're more than comfortable in that energy. But you're not. You know, it's like taking that three of swords over and over again. I feel like sooner or later, you've got to break yourself free, especially because the nine of swords is under it. And the death card is above it. What door needs to close? A repeat pattern for some of you. Someone could have kept throwing you that Five of Pentacles. And the Five of Pentacles, to me, does feel like a tower. It's something that happens usually outside of my control. But really, in the Five of Pentacles, I feel like I feel like you have no, no option but to keep moving forward. But I feel like eventually, in the Five of Pentacles, you, you are going to be surrounded by soulmate energy. So... If you find yourself in this repeat pattern, if lower vibrational people keep entering your life or, you know, situations, take a moment, think about your own vibration. You know, have I stopped believing? Have I given up hope? 
do I allow them to hold the power when really the power is yours? Okay, let's keep going. <clears throat> and that may be a little bit of a temperance of saying, right? Divine timing, but the timing doesn't seem right if I keep going back to the same old, same old. You know, it reminds me of... Um, I can't think of his name, Phil, I was going to say Phil Donahue, but it's not Phil Donahue, um, Dr. Phil, let's just say that, where he said, you know, on one of his shows, like, if I keep doing the same old thing, of course, now I forgot how it goes, but, you know, if I keep doing the same thing, but, but expect different results, it's not going to happen. Six of Cups over the Eight of Swords. Interesting. <clears throat> so Six of Cups talks about a period of time where there really are happy memories, treasured memories. It's interesting because when I see the sun, a lot of times I feel like for some of you, especially with the chariot, this can be talking about a move. Like, you know, you're jumping in that chariot and some of you, you could be like moving back home, back to maybe back to where you went to school. And even though that could seem, you know, that change can be difficult to begin with. I feel like the sun, it's will very quickly show you that you made the right choice. Now, I don't feel like that's for everyone, but I do feel like that's for a few of you. Six of Cups can talk about someone that I used to know. Someone that I used to know. And I find it interesting because, again, two hangmans. So two people could potentially be going through the same type of experience, unbeknownst to each other. But then at the same time, I feel like if I can set myself free from this, you know, if I can make the, the necessary moves forward, whether that means literally jumping in my car and moving or just clearing this energy of the past, you may just find that, well, that you literally find each other. Temperance says trust and divine timing. Interesting. Okay. But it does kind of feel like someone that I used to know. Look at this. We have the beautiful Empress. Wow. I love it when the Empress and the Emperor show up in the same reading. Now, this Empress is coming right over the Ace of Cups. So she's mirroring the Emperor. These two... Though they're different, they're very much the same at the same time. The Empress is someone who has learned not to shut her heart down. She keeps her heart open to caring about herself, but also caring about others. She has learned that I do, I do not have to create these walls which are fear-based. What she has learned to trust her own intuition, especially with the sun right above it, right above her, and then temperance right above that, coming over the Ace of Cups. So the Empress is someone who has learned to stay loving and nurturing, but she's also very powerful, very strong. Why? Because her intuition, her, she trusts her intuition. She trusts in divine timing. The Empress is someone who I feel like, I feel like we're, all of us are, are receiving like signs, epiphanies, ideas. But the Empress is someone who is very creative and she will put them into action. Again, I'm getting like twofold, like finding something that, you know, like uh, probably within your creative house, 
that you're just going to love it's just going to bring you joy, even even though it will take work. But I feel like it's going to be so satisfying. But I also have to tie them back also to love. Interesting that the Six of Cups is there. The Empress and now the Emperor with the Ace of Cups. You know, I feel like some of you may have been, let's just say, in a relationship where... You know, things just didn't go well. Um, you were taking these daggers in your back over and over and over again. And it really has done a number on you. You know, it is like you've given your power away. I do feel like the Ten of Swords, the Ten of Swords becomes really submissive type energy. It's almost like where I've given up. Nothing's ever going to change. Right? I close that door. I know another sword's going to come in. Well, that's the power of your intention. So if I expect another sword to come in, chances are that's what's going to come in. But if I can change that intention, and sometimes that means changing people, changing oneself, Understanding that that I have been in this repeat pattern, I need to start really believing in me and all that I can be in this world. Then it's like saying I expect good things to happen, and they do. The power of your intention. Nine-tenths of the law. It's the law of attraction. So, I love seeing the Empress and the Emperor mirroring each other. Potentially, both of them have gone through that hangman energy, right? Just seeking, I'm um, seeking wisdom. Well, both of them are going to receive that wisdom. Especially now that the sun is out. And temperance, divine timing. You know, if this is talking about, and in the Six of Cups, it doesn't have to mean it's someone that, you know, I had a love relationship with, but it's definitely someone who I have good memories of. Sorry, I needed to grab a drink. Um, definitely someone that when I think about them, I think happy thoughts. Not this Ten of Swords. There's no way they're the same person. And I feel like that's what the um, the Hierophant's also saying, right? Like, the person in the Seven of Swords probably doesn't have a lot of morals. But you do, right? I mean, just think about your major arcana, justice. It is. It means, and I know this just from the Libras in my life, like you are concerned what's fair and just, in the world but but you also need to be concerned about what's fair and just to you sometimes these are just life lessons you know what i mean like our soul you know wanted to learn these lessons and listen i don't feel like anyone is judging like how long it takes me to learn a lesson but I feel like what what you do want to understand is because of all these swords, you know, it's what created this prison. But it doesn't have to be. Recognition in a three of pentacles, but also rewards. I could see where someone in the seven of swords is like, well... I'm not going to recognize you for all that you are. I'll probably say the opposite of that. I'm not going to recognize that you deserve, you know, this beautiful unconditional love. But I certainly don't want you to have it with another, you know, because that's the type of energy they are. It's like, I don't, I can't give it to you, but I don't want anybody else to give it to you. Okay, well, 
that can only fly for so long. <clears throat> you know, and justice is also about making you whole again. So think about that. You know, think about your major arcana. You know, um, maybe next month what I'll do is I'll come out and read directly from the book exactly what each major arcana means, you know, for each sign so that you can understand why you carry the symbol of justice, balance, fair and just. All right, just keep going. Look at this, the three swords over seven of swords. Holy crap. Holy crap. So, someone's broken your heart at least three times. You know, it's like three times and you're out. And maybe that's what it's taken. And it doesn't have to be just one person. You know, if my vibration's been low, let's just say, then these people are just going to find me. You know, you need to think about, like, the people around you. Who do you hang out with? You know, I used to tell my kids that growing up, you are who you hang out with. But I know why the hangman is out now. I mean, I already knew it. But it is really clarifying that. You know, and I get, like, the fear of, like, falling in love. Especially if you've been through this type of energy. But here's the thing. You got to understand that if, let's just say, you uncreate that prison. Well, that is freedom. You believe in yourself again. I promise you, when you take on the energy of the Empress... Keep your heart open, right? But don't be anybody's fool at the same time. In the Ten of Swords, I do kind of feel like I'm somebody else's fool. How long am I going to let them continue to do that? And I feel like it's put a hamper on love for you. You know, like, who's to say the next person won't do the exact same thing? That's true. But I can tell you how you can better guarantee yourself. Think about your own vibration. Trust your intuition. You know, our guides are always sending us signs. And sometimes they're through red flags. But us as humans, and I know I've done this, where we just ignore that red flag. You know, it reminds me when, when um, before I got married, um, back way, way, way back. Every I was I was a bartender and um my ex walked in and we did have chemistry, but everybody there told me like Sandy, do not get involved with him. You're gonna regret it. And the more they told me that, the more I wanted to be with him. Now I can't regret it because I had two beautiful kids. But other than that Boy, were they right. But I just ignored the red flags. I ignored them. You know, I didn't have a lot of self-confidence in myself back then. Hmm. All right. And, you know, the moon makes even more sense now because I feel like that's what some of you are saying to yourself. How do I know that the next person won't put a sword in my back? How do I know if I take a chance on, you know, an adventure that feels right in my soul, right? Like, again, something that just feels natural to you. Now I'm talking about your creative house. How do I know I'll be successful? Well, I feel like all you, you know, if it just feels right, but what's stopping you is just fear. You got to learn to walk through that fear. Whew. 
beautiful, the full, a leap of faith. That's what it takes. It takes a leap of faith. A leap of faith on yourself. This is about a new beginning. It's over the nine of swords. Some of you, I feel like this reading is going to show you that you may have been in a repeat pattern. Again, can be with one person or it could be with like a bunch of different people. But that means I really have to look at my own vibration. The fool, a new beginning, the sun, a brand new day. I'm not going to let fear stop me. Just not going to do it. You know, as the fool moves along the journey, and in a reading, I feel like you're always the fool. Um, and the fool just, you know, the fool just means it's someone who has put the past behind them. They're not allowing, they're not bringing the past forward with them. The wisdom of what they have learned, yes. But other than that, everything else to the right no to the left to the left to the left to, or to the right i'm not sure it's a beyonce song a new beginning a leap of faith you know um and i feel like our angels are connected to this energy Reminds me again of those white feathers. Um, also touching the three of pentacles, which is again, your creative house, your individuality. And I definitely feel like this is saying you do need to take a chance on yourself. Look at this, the world. Oh, wow. Following the fool. So the world is the new beginning, and the world is the next chapter. And listen, if I can put these swords behind me, if I can understand that it's been nothing more than a repeat pattern, it's been lower vibrational energy, chances are it's not going to change. Like, if I'm waiting for someone in the Seven of Swords to change, then I'm going to be waiting for a long time, if and maybe forever. Ten of Swords would also verify that. The Nine of Swords would verify that. Like, even if they came in and said, oh, baby, I'm going to change my ways. Well, you're still going to be in that Nine of Swords because it's going to be hard to believe them. And maybe I take them back, but then there's so much worry. That's not the way to live either. The world, the next chapter, you know, and this really does speak about um, your spirituality. So I feel like it means that you are evolving, even if it's step by step by step. The full saying, put the past in the past. Now, the six of cups can be someone from the past, but it is not this person. Right. Happy, cherished memories. Bad memories, worrisome, untrustworthy, over and over and over again. Self-created prison. When I uncreate that prison, I am free. That worry, I'm not going to say worry goes completely away, but you're willing to then take that leap of faith. And it feels like simply by taking that leap of faith, it opens up the new chapter. And listen, I feel like the world, when it shows up in a reading, it talks about potentially the best time of your life. You may not believe that if you're still in this energy. Like, how could that be? I feel like you just have to trust. You know, first you need to recognize you need to be really honest with yourself. You know, being honest with yourself can set yourself free. That sun is helping to illuminate these things for you so that you can live really what I feel like 
maybe like the life of your dreams. You know, your soul came here to experience different adventures. And in the Ten of Swords with the Seven of Swords and the Nine of Swords and the Three of Swords and the Eight of Swords, I feel like I've been experiencing the same thing over and over and over again. So they're not going to change. Well, then maybe I need to change. And I, when I say change, I mean simply being honest, like evolving from that. You're like, I don't need you to change anymore. You be who you're going to be. I'm going to go do my thing. And that's what the Empress does. You know, the Seven of Swords next to the Empress, the Seven of Swords doesn't stand a chance. This is really when you're in touch with your spirituality. This is when you are believing in your spiritual team. All things spiritual. And I feel like once you start entering into that type of energy, it stays with you for the rest of your life. This could potentially talk about a love that will last the rest of your life. This could have la this Ten of Swords, Seven of Swords, that could also last the rest of your life. That's why you need to reclaim your power over it. And I feel like temperance, divine timing, coming over the sun, I feel like that's really what this reading is about, is to really show those who are, feel stuck, stagnant, that they have the power to make the changes, to really change their life. You know, it's interesting. I had I had a dream last night and it's interesting. I've been usually I don't dream very much, but lately I've been having like these these very difficult dreams and I wake up and I really feel them. And one of them was like when I really it just reminded me of a period of time in my life when I really felt lost. I really had no hope. And um, I guess I was like waiting for someone to come in and save me, right? Change my life. But nobody was. No one was. Nobody was. And everybody I, hang around, I hung around with back then was in lower vibrational energy. And it was me who eventually had to realize that I had to be the one to make that change. And that's when I actually decided to move back home. Interesting, because I felt that earlier. You know, and when I tell you my personal stories, it's not because I like to talk about myself, because I don't. I am a private person, to be honest. Um, I don't let very many people into, like, my deep, deep dark secrets, except for you guys. It's interesting. Um, <clears throat> but... So that was a dream I had, and maybe I had that dream to talk about it today. It, I truly felt lost, and it wasn't until, and actually, you know, I was with someone who was very abusive. It was this in the seven of swords energy, and I could not find my way out. And I remember I picked up the phone, and I called my mom, and I said, can I move back home with the kids? And she said, no. She's like, you, bet, you made your bed, now lie in it. And that just was, then I was completely lost. And then one day I decided to grab my kids. I don't even think I had a car. I think we took a bus and I moved back home and I knocked on my mom's door with the kids and they were little. And I just said, I have nowhere else to go. And she welcomed me in and my whole life changed. My whole life changed. And it just got better and better and better. But I had to free myself. I don't know, guys. And I think I'm just telling you that story so you understand that I know from experience what that Ten of Swords feels like. And, you know, did that person in the Seven of Swords ever change? No. They didn't change. Matter of fact, 
um, something made me get online. I don't know what it was and just look them up. Um, not that I wanted anything to do with this person. I didn't. Um, and then I found out this person passed away. And in the obituary, it said his girlfriend, Sandy, was next to him. And I was like, oh, my God, he had a girlfriend named Sandy. Like, that bothered me. You know what I mean? That bothered me. I wasn't even sad that he passed on. And that may sound terrible, but I just wasn't. Um, because honestly, I felt, okay, well, now God's going to judge you. So anyway. I don't know why I'm talking about all that. All right. So let's move this to a positive note because that's exactly re what your reading wants to do. It wants to move into um, what I feel like are blessings. But again, I feel like it's you making the changes, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit around and wait for someone else to change, especially if they've shown me over and over again that they're not going to. Instead, I need to jump into the fool's energy, right? I need to extract that wisdom that the hangman really is gaining. And you just may find, and by the way, I moved back to my hometown. Well, that's where my old love was. Um, so you just might find, again, two people are going through similar experiences. All right. What do I want to clarify? I feel like your reading is pretty clear. And it really is leaving on a positive note. Because again, the Empress right over the Ace of Cups. Not only a love, uh, you know, for her fellow man, just like the Emperor. And by the way, you may find that this person that may enter into your life after the fact, you may find that you both are, both of you are in that energy where both of you care about your fellow man. Seven of Swords, they care about themselves. You may find that both of you have really had like spiritual awakenings. And sometimes a spiritual awakening is simply I understand what's been holding me back, right? I'm going to allow this transformation to take place. I'm going to allow a rebirth in my life. I'm going to take a leap of faith that this next chapter is all that it's saying it's going to be. So I feel like I'm just going to go right across the middle of the reading. Let's bring these down. Let's go right across the middle. You know, this is one of those readings where, um, wow, look at this, the Knight of Cups, unexpected cup of fulfillment. And that is probably why I felt like there's two people who are in, who have found themselves in the hangman energy, you know, seeking wisdom. What do I do? Show me the way. And temperance is right there. Let me help guide you. But you have to be honest with yourself first. So I feel like then you are. You set yourself free. And here comes the Knight of Cups. Unexpected cup of fulfillment. It makes the emperor and the empress even more powerful as it relates to love now. I, you know, I always call them my power couple anyway. <clears throat> Excuse me. I feel like I was going to say something before that. But let's just keep going. Eight of Wands. First of all, the Eight of Wands to me is fast-moving energy. I feel like what this is saying, as soon as you make a decision to, let's just say, end a chapter in your life, 
to leave those lower vibrational energies and people, I feel like very quickly you start to see changes. This is also what I think about I bring about. Maybe both the people who were in this hangman energy, maybe both of them are thinking about each other. And maybe in the subconscious mind, they're attracting each other to each other. Again, temperance is like, yeah, you can say the subconscious mind, but really, it's all about divine energy. And again, that eight is a new beginning. But listen, it's wands. It's passionate. It's action-oriented. And it's following that Knight of Cups. So I feel like I break this pattern. I take a step forward in, in probably all areas of my life. And I start to see changes very quickly. We have the Queen of Pentacles. Um, can be a Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. But it doesn't have to be. So the Queen of Pentacles, you know, I call her my psychic detective. Um, this is someone who can overthink, for sure. I know that because I'm a Virgo. And it's one of our traits. But I'm not really feeling that here. I feel like this is talking about, I feel like you are this queen, no matter your sign. And I, well, unless, unless you know who this queen is. But I feel like this is talking about, you know, you really stepping forward in your creative house, in your financial house. And, um, you know, she is... Yeah, you can barely see it here, but she's holding this big old pentacle in her hand. And she's really bountiful. Well, hello, magician. Now, I'll tell you why I love the Magician coming out right now, because it's coming right by the Fool. And in the Fool's journey, the first mentor that the Fool meets along this new journey is a Magician. And the Magician is teaching the Fool that there's nothing of the past, at least of these swords, that need to come forward with you. The magician teaches the fool that you possess everything that you need to truly be successful in the life that you want to create. Again, it's the life that you want to create because it's the intentions that you're putting out there. I feel like I uh, like they were negative intentions when we opened this reading and I feel like now they're turning around. Magician is the manifester. By the way, that's exactly what I felt like with the two hangmans. Like two people who may be manifesting each other and not even knowing it. But divine knows it. That's the thing. Divine knows it. And I feel like she's just waiting for the right time. Right? Divine timing. I mean, think about it. You know, this Knight of Cups coming in when I'm in all this sword energy, and this is all fear-based energy. Well, it's not going to be met with the same type of enthusiasm as once I've ended that pattern, as once I've freed myself into the fool's energy. I've taken that leap of faith on myself, first and foremost. And then the Knight of Cups, unexpected cup of fulfillment right now, mirroring the, the Magician. Six of Cups. Interesting. All right, I'm not ready to end yet. It'd be a good place to end it, but I'm just not ready yet. 
you know, I keep getting comments. It's so weird. Um, I just got some on Virgo's reading where someone's like, they called me a liar, number one, said I don't know how to read Tarot, you're a liar, and then said that my my video should be 10 minutes. And I know I keep talking about this, but I have to say they're getting a little under my skin now because I just don't get how someone could come into someone else's house and dictate how they should do their work. Um, and I did say to her, I said, first of all, that's not true. I'm not a liar. And I said, and that was really mean. I don't even know why I'm telling you this. Oh, because I'm not ready to end your reading yet. You know, and I know, I know you, those who appreciate those long readings, I know you appreciate them. And that's why I read like this. You know, it's it's just who I am. It's how I read. But yeah, like these comments. You know what I mean? Like, look at your own house before you look at mine. Look at this. The Ace of Cups. Libra. Right next to the Magician. Ace of Cups is now mirroring that Knight of Cups. So we know that Knight of Cups is going to complete their mission. Right? I'm bringing in a cup. It's right over the Ace of Cups. And now... It's mirroring the Ace of Cups. And this Ace of Cups is now connected to the Six of Cups. Either someone is coming back into your life, but if this is someone coming back into your life, this is someone good. This is someone that Temperance would agree with. Almost like soulmates. We have two Aces of Cups. Temperance is really making sure both cups are equally filled. Both seem to go on, be going through similar type experiences. Taking a chance. No wonder it's so important that the Fool came out over the Nine of Swords. Because the Fool means that you are going to allow yourself to take a leap of faith. You know... We cannot allow people of the past of lower vibrational energy to stop us from the potential we have in our lives. We need to believe in ourselves. And I know I sound like I'm preaching, but I am truly coming from experience right now. You know, that perfect person, the emperor and the empress, they're mirroring each other in the world, the next chapter. The Ace of Cups mirroring the Knight of Cups. Oh, all right. One last go around. One last go around. Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands. Interesting. Seven of Wands really talks about standing your ground. And, you know, I often feel that, and I know this from experience too, but I often feel the Seven of Wands, especially when we're talking about this type of reading, where we have been dealing with difficult people who, you know, aren't going to make any changes, so we just have to accept that fact. Yes, stand your ground. Um, because sometimes they do make a repeat appearance. Like right when things start start to go your way, they want to like, oh no, no, just stand your ground. No way am I allowing you back in my life. There's no way. Well, I'm not going to leave it on that. But that is life. You know, that's just life. And we do have to learn to stand our ground. 
you know, like, I'm not going to allow you to take my joy and happiness from me any longer. You're not making any changes. And don't even buy it if they say they are. Not the way this reading is, is, is unfolding. Right? It just doesn't, there, I just feel like there is no way. And in the Seven of Swords energy, they're the type of person who can promise you the world, but deliver none. And I feel like once you dealt with energy like that, and you do set yourself free, especially the Empress's energy and the Empress and the Empress energy, they there's no way that they would allow that energy back in their life again. Now, I'm not going to shut my heart down because of you. Because I know that there are blessings yet. They're just waiting to find me. Some of you, I'm telling you, you're subconsciously manifesting love and opportunity into your life. Temperance is like, I knew it all along, but now you know it. We have the Page of Wands, and wow, we have the Four of Wands. Okay, so the Four of Wands is the marriage card. It's the commitment card. You know, interesting because we have the mother figure and the father figure here. Some of you, you may be finding the right person that you're starting a family with. And that's who this page may be. Some of you could already have children. And it can be blended families. But this is what I really feel. The page of wands to me is my risk taker. This is someone who knows that they have fallen before. But they get back up again. They do take chances in life. And not all of them are going to work out. But they learn from them. And then the four of wands. This is about making a true commitment to someone. And by the way, with the world here, I do feel like it's for the rest of your life. The four of wands to me, it's hard to see again in this image, but I feel like this is, this is the type of love that does last a lifetime. This is a type of love where... Each person just couldn't imagine not having the other. It's not one-sided. Temperance, making sure both cups are full. Well, here, they're full. You know, and then the full's energy kind of reminds me of the Page of Wands energy. So again, like-minded energy. You know, this is about making a true commitment. But everybody wants to make it in this energy. And I really don't feel like there's doubt. You know, is this immediate? Wow. I have to say, it depends where you're at in the reading. You know what I mean? If you are, like, if you're just starting to recognize you've been in a repeat pattern, but you're saying to yourself, that's it. I've had enough. Then I feel like things will start opening up. You know, that Eight of Wands talks about fast, <clears throat> excuse me, talks about fast moving energy. And again, what I think about, I bring about. But in the Eight of Wands, it's positive energy, right? Optimism. Like, I know that, especially if I've been with someone, let's just say it was a narcissist. Like, there's no way with the Empress and the Empress showing that if they would make a repeat appearance or someone new who carries that energy, I will know it within my intuition immediately. Immediately. And the Empress doesn't second guess that. She trusts her intuition above all. I also love this energy um, where, you know, not only might you be falling in love with someone, 
But I feel like you even have the opportunity of really beautiful collaboration. You know, let's just say at least support of what it is you want to do where someone really is behind you. They want to see you do well and you them. But I also feel like we could even collaborate. You know, this reading has gone from the hardest of hearts to the lightest of lights to, you know, pain and hurt and repeat patterns to unconditional love, commitment, potentially marriage, um, real love. And the sun, complete illumination, a brand new day. The chariot, how far can we take this? There is no limit, my dear. You know, as long as two people are willing to focus upon it, it just will grow and grow. And the world to me, I feel like whatever's happening in the world is for the rest of my life. That makes sense with the Four of Wands, the marriage card. If you don't want to get married, then let's just call it the commitment card. But a true commitment. Two Aces of Cups, two Hangmans, the Emperor and the Empress. Um, what, two Chariots? And there's more. If the synchronicities are off the chart. This is the way the readings have been for September. You know, those planets, even though I'm doing the readings early, um, it, it doesn't matter to me because I feel like a reading finds you right when you need it, when you need it the most. Um, and sometimes you do have to listen to a reading more than one time. And the reason why is sometimes you might listen to a reading with like, you know, your human mind, let's say, or your human ears. But then as things start to evolve, you have your spiritual ears on. So you watch it again. And it's like you see it in a whole different light. You know, do I think that changes like this can happen? It is my life. I mean, I am now living with the love of my life. Did I expect it? Not even for a second. But nonetheless, here I am. Here I am, even in the Three of Pentacles. Did I expect, you know, in my younger years that I would be doing Tarot on YouTube? I didn't even know what Tarot was back then. And now I couldn't imagine doing anything else. So, and the only reason I'm telling you these things is because you need to expect the unexpected. You know, the more you believe in yourself, the more that you set yourself free from limited people, limited ideas, especially about yourself, the more potential you have and the more potential shows itself. Holy cow, Libra, what a reading. What a reading. I think I'm just going to leave it there. I mean, here we are. We ended up with, you know, the Knight of Cups, unexpected cup of fulfillment. He fulfills that. Brings in the Ace of Cups. The Empress, right over that Ace of Cups. The Emperor and the Empress, they are my power couple. And then the Four of Wands, the marriage card, that commitment card. And it all opens up the next chapter. And I feel like it's for the rest of your life. Wow. I love you guys. I cannot wait to read your comments. And listen, I know people are going to be at different places in the reading. And, and that's why I love the comment section, because I feel like, you know, we can help each other to evolve. You know, um, some people may still be stuck. And, and I feel like that's why I tell my stories, because I felt that energy before. I felt there was no way out until I found the way out. So do not think that your comments don't help others. I see it all the time. And I thank you. I thank you. Um, I really thank you for every way you support the channel. Um, I love you guys so much. Uh, my prayer for you is that these blessings find you. 
and that you accept these blessings and that you believe in yourself and you allow this chapter to open and all the blessings will find you. That's what temperance says. A lot of this you don't even have to worry about. Just think about you and what it is you want to do and believing in you again. And the rest will just find you. And you win. All in divine timing. I love you guys. I thank you. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye. Well, it doesn't want to end.